New Orleans is best known as the Big Easy, which is the largest city in the state of Louisiana with close to 500,000 residents. New Orleans is a world-famous tourist destination thanks to its many annual festivals and celebrations like Mardi Gras, Jazz Fest, Voodoo Fest, and the Sugar Bowl. Much of the city is located below sea level between the Mississippi River and Lake Pontchartrain, so the city is surrounded by levees. The city suffered from the devastating effects of Hurricane Katrina, which made landfall on August 29, 2005. The eye of the storm passed within 10 to 15 miles of New Orleans, bringing strong winds that downed trees, shattered windows, and hurled debris around the area. Heavy rains and flooding immediately affected the eastern areas of the city. Katrina's storm surge caused several breaches and levees along the 17th Street Canal, the Industrial Canal, and the London Avenue Canal. As much as 80% of the city, much of which is below sea level, flooded with water reaching a depth of 25 feet in some areas. I really want to see what the devastation was. The devastation looked like, you know, when we actually go into the city. Uh, we went in March, which is like seven months after the after the hurricane. And the I my initial thoughts were, you know, we're gonna see some rebuilding, we're gonna see some cleanup, uh, we're gonna see the city at least, you know, on it, going through those stages. But the reality was that it looked like the hurricane just hit yesterday, really, like the houses were still off the foundation, cars were thrown everywhere, um, there was no electricity, the, I mean, the streets looked highly unkept, you know, there's grasses everywhere, um, rocks, gravel, trash was everywhere. Um, like I said, it just seemed like it, it had hit the day before, but this was seven months already after the fact, and it kind of hit me, you know what I mean? It, 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 it was ugly, really, it, it really was, like, it's just something, you know, you have to be there to, to see it, I mean, you can see it in the media, but once you, once you see it firsthand, you just don't understand why it's still like that. Since Hurricane Katrina devastated the city, the population has been significantly lower due to the majority of surviving residents either taking temporary shelter elsewhere or relocating indefinitely. It is estimated the population at somewhere between 160,000 and 200,000 residents in the city. Just things that, that are reminiscent of a hurricane but you wouldn't expect it to be like that seven, seven months later. And the media t is not even focused on it here anymore. Um, it's just kind of a thought in the back of our minds. And, and so before I went, I was like, well, maybe it's not that bad, but it really is that bad. The city is still, I'm sure there are more people there than there were um, you know, six months ago, but it's still very much a ghost town in some ways. There, there aren't a lot of people. And if there are people, they're either living in um, the white trailers or some makeshift shelter or something like that. Um, I don't know where people are staying. I know that the owners of the houses we did were in different states living with family, I think. But it's just interesting. I talked talk to some guys who, you know, everything that they had, they had, they were, had their homes and stuff, but then it was like overnight a whole city became homeless. And they didn't really have any resources to to help them get back on their feet or anything. Um, they just the whole city still needs a lot of help. And if it's just a small effort for for one of us who's in, in California, you know, so far away from this, it seems so distant. Efforts continue to aid survivors, clean up debris, and restore infrastructure. While most of the city has reopened to residents and areas which suffered moderate damage have substantially resumed functioning, the parts of town most severely damaged, such as some neighborhoods of the Lower Ninth Ward, are open only during daylight hours for residents to salvage items from their formerly flooded homes. 
I took a video camera through through the house and what was interesting about this house was that it was very, very dark because there wasn't any light getting in anywhere. The, the shades were down and there was, you know, grass on the on the blinds and stuff. It was it was hard to walk through. I was really afraid that I was gonna find a body or something. And I was as I was filming the one of the front rooms, one of the living areas, I um, I stepped kind of in because there was stuff all around, but I couldn't step all the way in and I didn't even notice. I I thought that I was stepping on um, some insulation, like this pink stuff that you put in your attic, but I went back through the house and one of the guys in my group said, look, there's a dog. It was, when I looked at it again, then I could definitely tell it was a dog, but at first it didn't look like it because, you know, it had been seven months the dog was laying there just wasting away in this house. And that's where the trip really came alive for me because it, be it just became like a real experience. Like this really happened to people. And it's not, we're just, we're not just here tearing down walls, but this actually affected the lives of people. So it was hard for us to go back in the house. The smell was really, really bad from the dog. But we, we went back in and um, one of the guys in the group said, you know, I wish this was just a nightmare and that I would wake up. But the thing about it is, all that, the stuff that we endured for that wasn't much compared to the people who were there because that was their my nightmare. They were living that nightmare. The, the dead dog in the house and all of, all of the guy's possessions being gone was that guy's nightmare. And the same thing for the rest of the city. The X's spray painted on the front of homes were previously inspected by rescue officials. A date corresponding to the inspection was marked above the X. Below the X were numbers counting how many dead bodies were found in the house, and to the left of the X, the number of dead pets found inside. The confirmed death toll of Hurricane Katrina is at 1,604, mainly from Louisiana. Also, 705 people remain categorized as missing, so this number is not final, even months after the storm. No. I don't think we're ready physically, mentally. We don't understand the, the, the effect that a flood can have on, on not only a city, not only a family, but on you as a person, the devastation that it leaves behind. As much as we you know, prepare our backpacks with canned food and water and all that, it, it's just like an earthquake. You just, you know, you know what the effects are of an earthquake, you know what the effects are of a flood, but once it happens to you, it, it, it's a totally different ballgame. Man. Hurricane Katrina was the costliest and one of the deadliest hurricanes in the history of the United States. I didn't go on the trip in order to, to have, like I say, oh, I did this, but I'm so grateful that I went because I, I know that we really helped people there. And even though it's a small step, we might have left people with, with studs in their, in their homes, but at least, they, at least they can start somewhere. And maybe they can rebuild from there. I'm just really thankful that I got to go and have this experience.